What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. I am your co-host, Joshua Meekins, and I'm joined here by my fantastic co-host, Amira Smith. And today we have a group of people that are fantastic in their own way and i'm going to let amira smith do their fantastic introduction like we always do we speak with people who we feel like are disrupting culture and our guest today i can personally say i'm a huge fan of theirs we have the women from around the way curls we have antoinette and shanti happy to be here listen like um I think if, if they know our pod, they definitely know your pod. Like, you guys are a successful pod as far as an, I'm concerned because I see the community that's built mm -hmm. around around the way curls, right? Um, you guys recently, we all did the Roots Picnic, same day. We did Saturday, June 4th, and um, that was a unique experience. You know what I mean? Was that you guys' first time doing a festival? First time doing first a live, yeah. yeah. Wow. Live festival performance. and a live show. Yeah. That was our first live show, too. Oh, and, see, um, look at that. How are cherries live congrats. together, y'all? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pop that cherry. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, um, Around Away Curls, like, everyone who knows, if you don't know, they are a show that, um, Give, give you guys a tagline, because I always crack up laughing. You're like, we talk about everything from love and light to, what is it, uh, money and dicks. Because, because duality, duality is, is a thing, thing right? The profound and the profane, yes. Listen, mm -hmm. and what makes you guys unique is that there's so many pods right now. There's a mm -hmm. lot, like, the market is saturated. And Shanti, you were one of the people that I, like, first people that I personally knew who had a pod that when I listened, I was like, oh, this is more than interesting. It drew you in because it's a take on two best friends. And like, how long have you guys known each other? Well, women known each other. We've known each other since high school. We've known of each other since high mm. school and the relationship really formed after we graduated she high always has to make that distinction <laughs> that we weren't super close to high school so y'all have beef y'all like friend. rival we didn't have beef at all she <laughs> she came to our school she, someone in our group and like our we were a bit cliquish mm -hmm. we like there were four girls and we were a squad and she went to grade school with one of the girls so when she came to high school when you come to any school junior year and you weren't really there when all the cliques established yeah. it's hard for you and shanti was also kind of like a lone wolf kind yeah. of vibe like she just kind of fit in wherever she went yeah. so like she'd come and chill at the table we'd be like oh, okay cool that girl is she's cool and then she would go off and do her own thing and then i just started stalking her after school i was just like i all my girlfriends went off to two schools or were traveling and doing their thing and i took a year to actually work and like get my money up before i went to college and shanti happened to still be in philly as well and Unlike me, I, I'm really not like this. I, and I was working close to her home. I knew that yeah. she lived there because we all left to go to the prom from your house. And I just started reaching out to her and stalking her. And she was like, who, why are you calling me? And I just kept, I just mm. kept being persistent. Like, hi, be my friend. That's and crazy. Then, I, I always thought because of y'all chemistry, I thought that y'all were like childhood friends. Like this is like I a, mean, that's childhood. We child. were childish. I mean, <laughs> <doing> childish. <laughs> childish. it was doing childish things. <laughs> what parts of Philly y'all from? I'm from Germantown. Yeah. From Roxborough. Yeah, and he's the only lone wolf. Wow. Yeah, Jersey. I mean, listen. It's I, like, you know what? We're going to get into that when y'all come that's, on our podcast. That's fine. Ain't nothing wrong with Jersey. I got right? time. <laughs> There's a lot wrong with Jersey. I but got nah, a it's a great place. I always say it's your favorite person's favorite place. No, it's you not. Know? It's just a place you drive through between Philly and New nah, York. That's nah. it. Nah. Shout so, out to the shore. <laughs> like with the two of you guys and well, the women, your chemistry, um, you guys have really built a community. Mm -hmm. And I see it especially on social media. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, I guess the tagline is, you know, two biracial women who were friends. You both have white moms. Um and Shout it's, out to our white moms. I you know, it's funny because it's I guess that's like a unique experience, right? Yes. Of like we all got the black mm -hmm. mamas and black mamas uh -huh. with the, all the sayings and uh -huh. everything else. Wow. And then y'all you know, the white moms, they probably was like, oh, my little baby, what's going on? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not our white mom. Not moms. my white mom. She, our white mom is bad barbs, and my mom is Ruju. That's <laughs> literally <laughs> their nicknames. They're edgy, tricky. Tricky. <laughs> Controversial white women yeah. right there. They, yeah, no. Probably was not my like mom a, is a little more cookie cutter than yours. Yeah, my your mom, mom does my not mom play. I was scared out. of her mom. Really, and I know you grew up like super <laughs> unique, oh, like um, almost like a hippie commune. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. all of it. Yeah. Hippie commune that was definitely what within it? my childhood. Yeah, a fort. 
We had a Ford at one oh. time. Like in the house? In or? the house. Lived in a van. Lived in Hawaii. I'm like, starting to get it, to get it now. Hawaii originally. Yeah, no. I think when we came to Philly is when my dad was like, yo, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> I need to stop following this wayward white woman around and go back to <laughs> West Oak Lane to my mama. And then my mom followed him. So once we got to Philly is when it kind of stabilized and this shit didn't get as, as weird. But no, it was... <laughs> And that's probably the outcome because it's like you guys come from woke parents. And mm. that's one thing about your pod is that it's um, mm. it's a sisterhood, right? Mm. And then you guys are, I would say, quote, unquote, woke, but you guys are socially conscious and see through a lot of the illusions and bullshit of society. But you also talk about it. And sometimes y'all don't see eye to eye. You're always on the same side, but you may look at it from a different perspective. We get there differently. Yeah, and sometimes y'all be arguing. And I see in the community <laughs> of like all the social chatter, people be like, I, I'm surprised y'all still friends. <laughs> y'all was going in on each other. And then they, y'all be like, what? This is unshakable. Like, that's, yeah. this is this is for life. Like, yeah. how um were you in this? Like, okay, so you've been podcasting since, like you said, you started with a blog. Yes. And then, and that was 2011, you said. Yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. how did you feel like the reception was with the blog itself? <laughs> the reception that's very was great. Sad. Yeah, that, that's oh. a sad, it's, it's sad story. A very sad. So the, the original blog was A Curl's Best Friend. That was mm -hmm. the name of it. And then we revamped. But the blog was focused on, it was during the natural hair emergence and craze. And so, um, it really took off. Shanti was doing like some really beautiful like videos and tutorials. And then I was like the fine haired, curly haired girl. And I was like, okay, well our hair is never going to look like that, but we can try these different things with these wraps and things. And people really gravitated towards us because we talked about hair, but we also talked about coming of age and things like that. And it was doing exceptionally well. Like we were in like Curly Nikki's book and was running around with Urban Bush Babes and Hey Fran Hey and Cheskali and all these people. And then the blog was like hacked. Oh, and no. we have nothing. It's all gone. Wow. There's nothing to show for it. Some YouTube I'll videos still exist. i to go exist. back to be like, what did I do with my hair that time? <laughs> Wait, so you guys, um, was this like Tumblr? Or was it yeah, was the platform? It was its own, it was like its A own WordPress. web. It was on housed by WordPress, but it was wow. our WordPress. site. Yeah. Because it's just saying like, hey, 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 friend, hey. I'm remembering, I'm like, because she you know the Tumblr, Tumblr days, she right? Yeah, Tumblr. I was big on Tumblr, big on but Tumblr. I used to see some of y'all content mm -hmm. shared over mm -hmm. to yeah. Tumblr mm -hmm. and things like we that. We had and I'm a like, Tumblr. It was goodness. basically, Tumblr was like the social media. It was like the Instagram where like, you have your website yeah. and then you took it over there to promote it so it could be reshared so people mm -hmm. could find your website. It was golden year. But we were, we were, there was a point where we were getting close to like, almost 100,000 hits a day on that website. Wow. Girl, I did not know that. I don't remember those stats. Damn. You don't look at none of the stats. <laughs> you can't tell how many downloads we get now. At that time, I did. At that uh, time, I was really we in the back of the house. But no, it, it was, it was take, We were featured on Curly Nikki's mm -hmm. very, like, her Bible of yeah. a natural hair website every week. She would like we had like a partnership with her and she yeah. just looked out for us and she would pull from our site because she she needed content as well. So it was for mutually sure. beneficial. And the amount of people that would come over and it was there wasn't a lot of space. Let me correct that. There was space. A lot of the natural hair got tricky because there were people who didn't have my hair texture or her hair texture mm -hmm. trying to achieve that mm -hmm. and so it started to feel weird because it was like wait a minute not everybody's hair is going to do this but there was less talk about like the fine hair or like people who you don't have like a ringlet pattern but the i think the real thing was that we had a lot of different hair styles yes mm. and so like then we had bows that we were even selling and making by hand and like we just had a different approach to it and, and, and people gravitated towards it because they also saw our friendship as well there. So they, they invested in a different way. So that's where the nuclear, like, so that's where all the business branched out of. Like, what made you yes. guys decide, like, let's do a blog? Was it just talking about your hair? Because sometimes it's hard to go in business with your friend. Or did you even look at it as a business when you first started it? No. She, that was her idea. Mm. Go ahead. There, it was, I had just had my daughter. I was 23 years old. I was like, fuck, I made a mistake. What am I going to do? I'm a stat now. I felt very um, trapped. Yeah. And so I would be home with her. And at that time, I was also, I had stopped straightening my hair. And I was just, I had so much time on my hands. And I was like, I dipped my toe into this 
amazing world of natural hair online on YouTube, all of the blogs. And I remember thinking, I want to start a boutique. I want to mm -hmm. start a Regiment. natural hair um, boutique. You know, Martian Maine. Yes. I wanted to do what Martian Maine was doing, that it was like hair products and imagery, books, everything catered to women of color so that we didn't have to have the experience that we had when we go to beauty supply Ooh, stores. Hello. And so I was like, oh, in order to like do this, you have to get your name out. So maybe I start a blog and get the thing out. And then I was like, but I should do this with her because our spin, our stories, I just, I just had an inkling like, no, we should do this together yeah. and so i think we were about to go to some event and i i remember sitting down and being like yo let's start this blog together well and we had talked cool. about it because you had you had told me that you were thinking about it but the back end technical stuff felt it felt Im intimidating and i was like at first the idea was that you would be the face of it and i would be in the background just doing the tech stuff and that was that was like how we were operating a little bit and then you sat down and was like let's just do this shit together yeah and i was like oh word and then it and then it and happened then, and then we just kept going and then we got sick of hair we were like everybody <laughs> and then life happened too yeah, i think yeah. just so much stuff life happened blogs weren't popping the way that they used to be the hack happened the the, the people that were put on by the natural hair curve, I think we felt some kind of way because we had lost, we didn't catch necessarily that same ride as everyone else. Our trajectory yeah. wasn't like Chescalese or Hey Fran Hayes. So I think we were feeling salty or just feeling like, damn, we missed that. We missed Did out you that feel opportunity. Ahead of the curve right or a little bit behind it. At, once we stopped nurturing, once again, that consistency, consistency stopped. Yeah, life happened. The consistency happened. stopped, and we didn't catch the wave. Yeah, because those those folks that. were going to they. That's when they started getting the ads. That's mm. when they started realizing, like, oh, this is a business. Yeah, and but, they started riding it in a way that we we just weren't in those places. But the beautiful thing about them, and Fran just told me this the other day, the way that they cultivated that was that whenever an, a company reached out to any one of them, they will all get on a call. Mm -hmm. and talk about what the company offered and whether or not they should take it because mm -hmm. they were like we we were very they she, it was beautiful she said they were so um transparent about what they were making and what was being offered so that everybody could get a piece of the pie and so that they could start demanding more because obviously when things get saturated it's like the video girl like nobody yeah. pays a video girl anymore it's exposure yeah. Yeah. but it's like Ne th because they were on those calls they really we were helped. not on those calls right but <laughs> and, and they didn't know us that well but like that that was part of like oh and then we fell off we stopped being as consistent life mm -hmm. happened folks fell in love right. folks got into college and was stressed out and then it just became this thing that was like all right we have it yeah. and we just we just relied on social media to just like sometimes we would post something and people would stay and be like we miss y'all Listen. And that was that. I think, um, but you know, they say like, what's for you is for you. Mm -hmm. And like you said, like, you like, we got tired of hair after a while. Oof. You guys have built something where it is, to me, it's, um, it's special because sometimes people, they just attach to the one person, right? Or it's about, it becomes so, like, people really identify with the Around the Way Curls brand and you two collectively. Usually it's like, oh, I'm a team Shanti this. person or mm -hmm. team, team Antoinette. Yeah. And then the brand itself is like kind of in the background and you keep trying to like put your personal thing to like, hey, bring attention to this. But people love you two mm -hmm. like a whole lot. As But how do you feel as black women in the space of podcasting? Because I feel like no matter what, man, the business side of it, you business. know, because we see some of these pods that are so niche and they don't always have the community and their deals that they be getting sometimes. Like the, being honest, like the white pods. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the deals they get, I look and like, damn. I'm like, what are we? What I'm are really we encouraged, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. I have the privilege of being, of sharing space with some people, like with the crystals of the reed, with like um, Mandy of horrible decisions yes. to see the thing is. and. Jade of uh, getting grown and Jade and XT, like all of these people that are securing these deals with Fran of, um, you know, the friend zone and Asante and Dustin, and they're doing it. 
And they're also hopping on these calls nice. and creating this information and starting to share the information with me of like, uh uh-uh, uh, don't do this. Like my girlfriend, Mandy, is creating a hub for black creative. She just started mm-hmm. uh I was telling you, started mm-hmm. her own full court studios nice. for podcasters, for black podcasters. Everybody in there is a person of color working. All of the creatives are in there from the person doing the video from the and so She's also reaching out and producing podcasts for people and making sure people get guaranteed minimums, making sure that like she's so interested in sharing the information so that because she's like, there's money like these networks have money and I want black people paid. So I currently feel really encouraged, but I do in the like there are times when I'm like, yo, we have the numbers, we have the content. And even if this podcast has more numbers, they don't have our content and they don't have, like, I feel like when people come to Around the Way Curls, they stay, mm-hmm. like they're invested. And like, like you said, like the community is really important to us. And I don't think that, I don't necessarily know that that exists. I think a lot of people listen to some podcasts to to hate certain people or yeah. to hear the toxic take mm-hmm. or to like argue <clears throat> about it. And like people come here to like, they, are, they feel like friends. Mm-hmm. So I choose to be encouraged, I, I guess. I think it's what your allegiance or what your main goal and focus is as a pot, as a creator. What it what are what is your allegiance to? Is it to the content or is it to yeah. the end you want to be put on? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you want to be put on, you're bound to have to sacrifice in some way or tweak your authenticity because you're following this this template or this template that you think you have to follow, but but you definitely want to get paid too. You, d- yeah. you definitely want to get paid. It? You're going to be paid, but you know if you're doing it to get paid and yeah. your content mm-hmm. is getting tweaked or is is created to get paid. Yeah. For me personally, that that feels like that gets you, tricky. It gets you can sacrifice and you, yeah, it could it it could blow up in your face. But how do you walk that line? Because I think I think we are no. all similarly in that space. We don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 we try to figure it out. I now. think we're figuring it out. <laughs> I think yeah. we're figuring it I out. I think check in, in our too. differences. But, in right. our differences. Because I think we check in so much. Like, yeah. we'll check in on, like, I never want to do an episode. Like, some I've, I've recently had these hot takes, these unpopular opinions. Yeah. And I really met them, all of them. I didn't want to curse. <laughs> I was about to say a curse word. I mean, you but, can. Okay. Yeah. But I, I really met all those. But I don't ever want to do that just to be provocative. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Me and, and Josh just to, talk about that a lot. There's so many pods that they only do hot takes. Oh, and, and it's just to be provocative or just say stuff that's like, what? But we check in a lot. It's like a real relation. Like yeah. we're in a relationship where we're like, how are you feeling? What did you think about this? All right. Ne- like after this, we're going to meet for a little bit, grab dinner, plot next steps and like keep pushing. But I think you also have to meet and be like, are we still on the path? Are we still doing this? Like, is our mission and vision still Like a intact? purpose check-in. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that can get lost along the way with mm-hmm. money. When them, it gets... Tr- <laughs> what's his name? Jesus and Mara? No, Don't shit, upset me. I'm grieving. Gets, it's hard. It's, but, it's but wild wait, out so here. So I know that they ended, but I didn't know that like, it was why? like drama or I anything. have no... No, I don't know. They've really not said it. I, mm. Somebody says because of I think it's best that way, though. Wow. That a manager, their Jeez. allegiance to a manager or one person I'm fucking with. Excuse me. Are we, are we cursing? Yeah. One yeah, person yeah. not messing with the manager, the other person yeah. wanting to, you know, being loyal to the manager mm. yeah. caused a, caused a riff. Things happen. But I, that don't just cause a riff. There, mm-hmm. I'm telling you. There yeah. must that was have a slow buildup. It had to have been. And I don't know, from what I understand, we don't have to talk about this, but I don't know if they had, the basis of their podcast was friendship. I feel like yeah. they, it was, oh, we have this chemistry, let's build this thing together. I don't yeah. know if yeah, they, they were friends they, first. They were in summer school together and didn't really know each other and then realized that they were both funny on Twitter mm. yeah. and reconnected. And then, so and then they started the podcast and it just business, took off. It was a business mm. venture anyway. But yeah. yeah. Which, that's, and that's always hard, like the the culture of hot takes and trying to go viral. Because you know, once you get that hot don't take, try to go you viral. might end up on shade room or whatever. Yeah. But sometimes it could be unnecessary attention, and it's like it's like lightning in a bottle. Like you said, mm. it doesn't mean people are going to come back. Yeah. No. But with y'all show, I, I don't even remember how the awareness came, but. Like, I think I might have saw it from Shanti's Insta, which you're not even on Insta anymore, <laughs> personally, which that upset me. I ain't gonna oh, lie. Same. <laughs> same, but I, I I'll shut like, up. I was like, wait a minute. And I went to DM you about something because I didn't even have your number then. And I was like, where'd she go? go and on. I was like, come on. 
I said, dang. Shanti will not play this game with us. I don't, I, listen, nope. I feel very deeply with Kendrick, Lucy. I don't want the power mm. of Lucy to get me. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to like... But she's on Instagram all the fucking time. <laughs> I'm on Instagram hey, listen, for people, Sable. Gotta, I'm on Instagram for Round the Way yeah, Curls. I'm about to say, because I, I used to come to Sable. Mm. Like, hey girl, like, dang, where you go? And he's like, oh, I just, I'll be back. And never came back. <laughs> you gotta take a leave of absence, you know? <laughs> yeah, but the... Um, Three Instagrams. Yeah, I, once I, but once I first listened to like one episode, and I was behind, you know what I mean? So then it just went to the next one, and next one. And I would just be... Like literally Aww. just doing dishes or like, oh, let me just clean. And I have my earbuds in and I would be cr- like laughing out loud at some <laughs> of the stuff. And sometimes I'm like, hell yeah. Like, so you guys, like how they say like best friend in someone's head. I think for a lot of women, you guys are the best friend in their head where they're just like, dang, I feel how she feels. I feel how she feels. But also the friendship because, yeah, like seeing authentic, well, even when we think about television, Authentic female black women uh, friendships. Mm-hmm. Mm. Insecure brought it back to us, mm-hmm. right? But before then, it was like girlfriends, and yeah. you know, it's there's Which not enough. There's been a void for it. Yeah, yeah there's not enough like things on TV that feature us that aren't trauma based or yeah. talk about it. You know what I mean? Agreed. Yeah. So then when we could find it yeah. in a pod or anything mm-hmm. else, which you know, at the end of the day, um, one of my friends who like does like this marketing. And everything he had a post and he was saying like people don't understand if you have an instagram if you have you're a media company mm. so like and i had to think about it and i said dang you really are because now the demands are like give us content give us mm-hmm. content so whether tv show or not just authentic like friendships among two black women where yeah y'all don't fall apart if there's an argument where but then you see that you guys really intimately know each other and each other's families like that's that's something that's super special and um you guys built business around it yeah um how i guess it's like when we talk about you know how do you define what you do do you guys have a clear definition like <laughs> the, like in, in like like let's say you know because we talk about you know potting is like some people just do it and then there's money to be made so if you're talking to a you know a sponsor or advertiser or going to get it how do you define it i think we're working on that pitch but what's so crazy <laughs> is we are working on are. <laughs> i mean that's a, that's a conversation that she and i have a lot i i actually reached out to her and was like yo when I'm in these rooms now and these people ask me what our podcast is about, I'm like, oh, well, it's uh, money and dick, love and light. It just doesn't come off. So we were like, okay, the profound and the, like we explore all the space between the profound and the profane, Mm -hmm. which is a first step. Yeah. But I also think there's a more general concept of like, it's a lifestyle kind of coming of age Mm -hmm. into like Mm -hmm. your womanhood and into your identity and like you get to be a fly on the wall as we get really vulnerable and silly and whatever, but like you get to you get all of it here, and hopefully you learn something from it. You get more questions than answers. Yeah. But ho- like, at least that's where I that's how I feel about it. Like, so we're still putting it together in a nice buttoned up elevator pitch. Yeah. But it's it's like the exploration of the space between the profane and the, the profound. profound yeah right because it's like yeah we're going to talk about you know friendship but we also going to talk about some dick or we're going to talk about like or on all this on all the complications of all friendship the com- yeah, what that like everything and in between so. i don't think us being vulnerable too and talking about how even being in business together is difficult like you had to check me once and she said she said i'm tired of talking to you and every time i talk to you we're talking about business mm. where is our friendship like she had to say that to me. I was like, "Oh girl, okay." And I, I, I remembered, like, "All right, I need to just start calling her to check in." Yeah. And it gets tricky where I'll say to her, "Stop, we gotta talk about this on the pod." And it makes me feel bad, but I'm like, "It's too good because you can't recreate a moment like that." No, for sure. So it is a balance, but we're honest about that. Where I think other podcasts are, we're honest when we're like, we're fighting over who's gonna edit, mm. or like we're honest about being tired. We're honest about not knowing what the fuck is going on in our lives or being sad. Listen. And so I think that's just a really human space to be. And so we just have to figure out those three sentences to summarize that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't make money off of it. <laughs> it at the end of the day, it's, it's, a li- it's lifestyle. That's, w- that's really what it is. But it's, it's not lifestyle in the sense of there's certain people where it's like, come, you, come here so you can want to be like me. Mm-hmm. It's like... Come, 
ours is more like come here so you can feel seen and you can feel understood because mm. we're just as a mess as yeah. y'all is that good enough no, I, I, think, I feel like we need to cut the, we got to be more precise that was good though that i mean was, i was over here we'll listen back we got yeah. it we, we have to get back right in there we got to a minute so when we go ask these people for money we're like okay no <laughs> that's i think we gotta hit target up yeah. like he can think, people come here to be seen <laughs> listen come for a authentic experience no and yeah. really i think they come to you too so that they can know it's okay to stop pretending yeah mm, to feel safe. Feel i see y'all like i've listened in times where you be like why aren't you talking into your mic and it's time to be like oh, she be yeah. way back her mic be right here she's like yeah girl because i'm like first of all your ring light is off <laughs> <laughs> your mic is all the way over here you didn't forgot we she just talking to her friend i'm like can you please yes. <laughs> and, and I've, I've heard those conversations about like all oh, editing and then this and I used to be like listen because people you know it's that whole thing of like we got it together and just like in like no. mm. rap is that I'm, we rich we already doing it and times where I feel like I've heard episodes where y'all would talk about something that happened and you'd be like man I don't know maybe I was mad because I maybe it was PMS and they're like girl isn't that thing and it goes to that other part where it's like people can stop pretending yeah. and still be okay and be way more relatable honestly and it's not a tactic it's like real and I think that's how y'all built the community because people see it. That's the best. That's the best compliment. <laughs> no, you. it is. Like, listen, like, it's so many people just they. Everybody wants to be an expert. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like sometimes people literally are an expert we are on a space. <laughs> <laughs> we are no nothing. That's our favorite word. We are no, no nothing. Nothings. We have limited vocabulary, <laughs> and we're figuring it out. But are brilliant though. <laughs> like you're both brilliant, and but you will be like, hey, but maybe I don't know, mm -hmm. or maybe you know, I feel strongly, but maybe I don't have the information. You know what Thank I mean? Thank you for listening to this two hour episode. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah, See you yeah. next week. Like, but that's it's cool. Check on your own all the time because we should. No. No, no. <laughs> I, can I ask you a question? Sure. What is I'm so curious to know what 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 criti constructive criticism could you give us? Like what could be mm. better? I would love I, to know. I that. would honestly say that bec I think it's the thing of like I only constructive criticism. It probably would be of the business side. Mm. Like I'm not hearing the ads on it, and I don't understand why. Mm. You know what I mean? What? I'm like these these women are. They got something that's so golden here. And are they, and it's probably because like most people know me and Wallow are like siblings. They aren't siblings. Okay. Like I've, we've been friends for 20 plus, 21 years or something. And he's always about make that money. And he, yeah. he came into like, just like just some research on pods. And then he's always like, you don't know what you have. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, it could be, you know, sometimes he'd be like, Mir, if anybody got some game from me, it should be you. He'd be like, we built stuff together. Why are you not making more money? And I'd yeah. be like, I don't, I don't know. Because I'm like the broke friend. It's you know the, what I mean? It's the, it's the confidence behind yeah. stepping into a space and, and knowing that you have something golden. And, for sure. And, and asking for what you want. Mm -hmm. And, and presenting it like this is mutually beneficial. And knowing that it is. And sometimes I think we have to get there. And I think with me, I always like I tell Josh will tell you, like, anytime I'm in any I always ask for top rate. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you gonna either tell me no and give me a lower price. Like I just I, How some, do you how do you deal just, with the re rejection of it if you do get rejection? I'll rejected? just I just say, Okay, well then maybe this is not for you or they usually just counter. Yeah. They it's counter never really and a say, no. Like, oh, that's a, above my, you know, it's more than my budget. And I said, well, what's your budget? And then, but it's just, you know, it comes down to kind of like, it sucks, but I'm a little, I'm, I know I'm good at like, I design, there's a lot of things I do and I'm extremely good, but I'm also lazy. So mm -hmm. I just be, and you know, you start doing something, it's all going to be work. It's going to be hard work regardless. So my problem is, is that I always imagine more work than I'd be like, oh, that's going to be a lot of work. I don't even know if I want to pursue X, Y, Z. I see. But so I ask for the money. They give it to me. And that's great. And we, I do it. But other times it's like it's going to take on so much work. But it'd be like it's all work anyway. So might as well put the business or make the deal. And I guess with so it's like I have the confidence. But sometimes I'm like, I don't want to do it. I, I want my hours to myself. I want to reclaim my time. Mm -hmm. I want to do the minimum for the maximum amount of money. Right. But so then with Wallow, he'll be like, why you ain't doing more? And I be then my mind wanted to be like, I don't want to work. <laughs> like, I just don't want to do the work, right, part. With I don't you think two. you should call that lazy. I think I think people, I think lazy is a cop-out from mm. unexplored things that mm. we, unexplored, valid, 
emotions, uh, desires, resistance against a certain type of energy. I don't think it's late. Explain sure. that. Like, why? I think I th and I because I think I've suffered and I watched a lot of people be like, oh, I'm lazy. I'm not I'm not. It's I know I'm not a lazy person. I think that there's something in me that I'm learning how to articulate that resists the grind, grind mm. that resists grind. A, or is not even really in alignment. I haven't really done the work to see, do I really want that? Yeah. And why don't I really want that? What do I really want? Is Am I trying to do a shortcut? Right. Do I think that this work or this money is gonna be get me to this other thing that I want? And so I think rather than saying I'm lazy, I think it's the work of exploring, like, what is this resistance that I have? Because you're not a lazy person. Because Oprah, this is a long, long time ago, I heard her say it once. And then I kind of regret it because I used to say this to my son because he's 22 now, but he, he, he has internalized it. But Oprah used to say, do not work hard for what you don't really want. Mm. And, I, and that, that became like kind of like deep embedded. Because sometimes you say like, you'd be like, I could do this and you might want me to help you and build this with you, but is that what I really want? Mm. And it turns into a job anyway, mm -hmm. you know? So like even when like Josh and our um, boy Tony, like, so they have Mike J Films. And when they were like, we're gonna do a podcast. And it was like, Mary, you wanna co-host it with us? And I was like, I thought about it and I said, yeah. Like I already worked with them on some other stuff, film stuff. And I'm like, sure you know but then there's other times where you're like i don't know if i want to make that like almost like damn near a part-time full-time mm -hmm. but like my son he he internalizes so much that he you know and that's the thing about being a mom and people who have like really little kids sometimes they'll be like in their zone and i'd be like you're gonna be surprised because when that kid his teenage they're gonna be like i don't want that mm -hmm. and there's nothing you could do to make me want that mm. I don't want that job or I don't, that's not what I see for myself. And then you're like, damn, sometimes it, it kicks me in the butt. Cause he'd be like, who, who wants that for their future? You or me? Yeah. And I'd be like, damn, you right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what me. I mean? But, um, but for you two, I think that's the only criticism. Cause I, I love the show and I, people tune in to get you two, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like to the friendship, because either they have a friend like one of you, or they wish they had a friend like one of you, or you help them process thoughts, ideas, um, you help them let their guard down, be vulnerable, because mm. that's the biggest thing you guys have is like your your intimate friends who don't, y'all don't hide from each other. You yeah. know, and sometimes you have those friendships where you see or you see people and you be like, they lie to each other. They don't mm. show up fully. Mm. They don't show that's up fully. Themselves. You know, they could have a relationship with something and they're not being honest about their part and what how it transpired. But I, I, I look and I kind of think to myself, man, they, like, people should be throwing money at them. And mm -hmm. I think they will. So I'll be thinking about the business part well, of it. If anybody has any on. business help, <laughs> we'll be more than happy to. T I, think it's, I think it's starting it. I, I truly think that for us it's a matter of getting it down on paper, knowing yeah. what that pitch is, and then just sending it. But I think we have to get it down on paper. And yeah. I, I think that I am starting to recognize as I have more conversations with people in this space that like our numbers are good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i was like wait our our numbers are actually really good yeah. like mm -hmm. that we're actually putting out great content and that we we be, we deserve to be in the space yeah. like we deserve to be at the table and in the conversation i think for a minute i think what happened with the blog uh -huh. for me i think it made me always feel like we were catching up mm -hmm. and we hadn't quite arrived yet and we still haven't but we we're we're doing well and like it's okay to acknowledge that and say like okay we can go to people now and 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 ask for this mm -hmm. that's a whole other imposter syndrome and everything else we so talk about just, it all the time yeah. too yeah so it's just I, it's that's really good to hear that's yeah. really helpful truly cuz that's why I, I i always have imposter syndrome yeah. always like literally I was at the, my gig yesterday doing voiceover stuff and then my friend was like, did you send your invoice yet? And I was like, no, cause I'm having imposter syndrome. I said, but once it's done, I'm gonna have my delusions of grandeur again. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna hit them with the invoice. <laughs> like, remember you said this, give me my money, yeah. you know? Cause I be delusional sometimes like, yeah, but that's what makes me ask for it. But doing it, when you make that ask, I be scared. Even with the roost picnic, it was interesting how that came to be. And we were super, super grateful, still are super grateful, but we yeah. should have countered. Yes. Mm. We should have countered and we didn't. Yeah. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Like yeah. we should have said, okay, 
instead of asking what is the pay yeah. this is here is our rate yes mm -hmm. we did not do that no we didn't we were so grateful to just oh, i can't believe they even asked us why not you're fucking yeah. from philly and you have a a big podcast mm. with, like this makes sense absolutely and, and, and guys, we didn't view it like that and for like festivals and you know black women come out mm -hmm. and that's the thing like you know it don't matter mm -hmm. where i travel i could be on a vacation i could be with mother there's groups of women who i'll just look and be like dang look at them like mm -hmm. women travel together they show a lot black women show up for each mm -hmm. other and yeah. celebrate each other so they want they were going to come out to see y'all yeah. you know what i mean now the finding the podcast stage <laughs> once they got there Child. but they could find it you know what i mean <laughs> but they're going to show up for you yeah. guys so yeah, like y'all gotta cut the imposter syndrome part out, cause y'all, 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 y'all are it, y'all her. You know what I mean? Like y'all are her, and there's so many people. Once they, I times where I would tell my girlfriend, it's like, oh, you listen to this pod, and they listen, they be like, oh my god, I love them. And then you know, when Apple does the work, sometimes they'll yeah. be like new episode, yeah. and then you'd be like, okay, well, what am I doing? Anyway? Let me just dishes? Let me play, just, yeah. yeah. Or I'm cooking, so let me put it in, and then sh you go right through it. Um, now. For some people, if you haven't even seen the pod, I, you you recognize the voices <laughs> because <laughs> they were both featured. Well, um, Antoinette was featured on Jasmine Sullivan's Hotels album under Antoinette's Tale, and then the expanded deluxe version. Then came Shanti. Um, how was that? Because I know that that kind of is like you're you're talking about a relationship or something, and even though it's a snippet, how 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 did it feel? Because you're already vulnerable as yeah. it is on the pot and everything. <laughs> and even on Insta, right? And then it's like you're, you're putting yourself in something that, if we're being honest, albums live almost forever, mm -hmm. right? Like That's people, an album that will live forever. Yes, we're still listening to old Stevie albums mm -hmm. and interludes from yeah. A Tribe Called Quest, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and now here you are cemented in this and talking about your business. It's crazy. Yeah. I probably had a very different experience from her because Hotels was already huge yeah. when you had to record the deluxe. I just realized that like, oh, that probably felt crazy and like super daunting. For me, I was I was at work and Jasmine is is a part of our group. We all met in high school, in high school. And we're just friends. Yeah. Like we don't. So she hit me one day and was like, she hadn't she really didn't she told us that she was back in the studio but we didn't know that she was putting together this project or what it was about she did we just knew she was back in the studio we don't mm -hmm. talk about business or work we get we talk about boys and shit like that yeah. and so she hit me and was just like yo i need um you to record some shit she was like just send me a voice memo of you talking <laughs> the shit that you talk about women and their bodies and i was like well what do you mean like healing their body like i didn't know and she was like no 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 like their bodies being their own mm -hmm. you know like when it comes to sex and stuff and i was like oh all right and so i that was it i just stepped in a closet job. of my mm. of of my old job and sent her this and she was like expand more on this part and i was like right, okay and then i did it and because I, I mean it like yeah. i mean it with all my heart and soul and I sent it to her and never asked about it ever again. Like I just, I just thought I didn't know what she was doing, but I didn't even think that it would ever be on any album. And so <laughs> this bitch, so she hits us like two years later. It was really Whoa. that long. Like she had reached out, and I think she had told Amanda, who's also our girlfriend. Yeah, I think she told her what she was working on because Amanda's was much more personal. Yeah. Um, but with me, she was just like, you always talking this shit anyway on Instagram and everything else. I just need you to say it. <laughs> and I thought she just needed some inspiration or wanted to, to hear somebody to hear it or was making fun of me to her mom because she does that. Yeah. And then she, her manager hit us up and was like, oh, he needs you to sign this stuff. <laughs> and I was like, what is this for? And her manager started cracking up. Juju was like, she didn't tell you? We were like, no. And she was like, she has a whole album coming out. Ah, like wow. she has, And we were like, for real? <laughs> and that was it. And then she was like, "Okay, oh, y'all come. We go. We gotta record some. Vi That's how she is. She's like, we gotta record some videos. It's just like this little video stuff. We gonna do to help promote it. Okay. Like it. It was nothing like that. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna use some of this for the tour. It was like yeah. okay. And then to see the response, I was like, oh, this is great. Like, <laughs> I was happy that people felt empowered by it because at first I didn't yes. remember what I said. And so I was like, oh, man, I, I was nervous. I was like, what did I say? What did I say? I'm going through my phone trying so to figure you look it out. I it? couldn't find it. It was years, <laughs> years ago. And so her manager sent it to me and was like, wait, 
I want you to make sure that you're comfortable that you approve. And at that yeah. point, I'm like, I'm not going to tell this girl. No. No. Like, like yeah. that would be so annoying. But she just took that from a voice memo wow. from me in a closet. And so was yours, because it's like, you know, when we get content and we're consuming it, we assume it was, you knew what it was, you, were getting, you know what I mean? So no. Mine was far more informed. Knew, yeah. Mine was yeah, far so more yours informed. was after the release yeah. of Hotel. She gave okay. me the topic. Okay. okay. She's like, write something about selfish or... So you knew. I, again, she has this, this not low Nonchalant. pressure thing and it, it's your friend asking you so yeah. i was like I, and some parts of me wanted to be like oh no I don't, I don't want everybody to hear and then i was like girl yeah. so i just wrote up you know some old past uh feelings yeah but yeah. we should in the bathroom in the, in the memo similar yeah. just in the bathroom quiet yeah here you go she was and like this, oh, was, that works. this, this was like two days before it yeah wow. she was the last oh. The way Jasmine She's works. She's girl. She about stressful. some selfish ass nigga. I said, say less. <laughs> <laughs> you hurt me. Why didn't you? Oh, no, no, no. But that's how she works. Like, it, it's just like, yeah. She had the delay that the, del she had the date that the deluxe was coming out. And I remember she was hitting me up, asking me to source. Because my homie is bro's tail. Yeah. And she was like, can you source some dudes? Like, just, I want to know about when a dude got hurt. I was like, okay. So I sent her a whole bunch of people. And, you know, people picked and she was like, okay, cool. But like her, cause she hit me was like, do you think Shanti would do it? She's so private. I was like, ask her. And it was like two days before she had to turn everything in. Wow. It's I mean, ridiculous. I guess it's the artist's way. Like, oh, yeah. she's, I concur. I can't stand it. <laughs> Neither one of y'all, it gives me anxiety. But the, we should have known that something was up because there was a, there was a <laughs> Valentine's day. Remember that Valentine's day? that we all spent together. She had invited us, all of us over her house. She was like, let's get dressed up, let's this. It's gonna be a girl's day. She's in a whole relationship. So we were like, why do you wanna be with us? And she was just like, no, we haven't been together. And then she had these games out where she was asking these kind of intrusive, not intrusive for us, but like, yeah. it just wasn't like her to, she doesn't talk a lot. She yeah. likes to just observe, but she was like engaging us in these games. And I was like, she, I made fun of her. I said, girl, you didn't cook for us and invited us over your house to source I for this that goddamn was album. Was you, that was what she was. She was like, hmm, all right, that's a crazy ass story. <laughs> like, and she was cracking up. She was like, no, I wanted to see y'all. I said, no. And then you was writing hotels right after that. You're like, girl, you're source inspiration. <laughs> I was you're like, you are not slick. You did not want to see us on Valentine's Day. Don't do that. But Child, the artist, way she needed inspiration. She's like, hi, you know, you need that, you need that inspiration. Shout out to her. Best I'm ways of friends. Best. How, so proud of her. After the um album, did you feel like it was an uptick in like interest in around no. the girls? So people, I guess they, because it's not like they tell they you. They didn't. Mm. She didn't tag around the way yeah. curls. There was no yeah. around the way curls involved. So yeah. like there was so. Sure, your your personal probably got hit. I didn't have my personal at that time. You probably got yeah. My and mine my definitely got more. My it's personal insane. page, probably a bit, but not as much as you would think. Okay. Um, I more so get a lot more engagement when I'm on different podcasts, believe it or not. That's yeah. when my stuff is like uptick, uptick. I'm like, oh. Actually, my engagement came from the viral um, video. <laughs> I, I had a video go viral from um, a rally. I was at a rally mm -hmm. and I, I posted this video about Black Joy and like CNN was hitting me up and like all of these news outlets were hitting me up for it and i was like y'all need to relax and it just went it just went crazy but for hotels not as much as you think i think people were so happy to hear her that even when it was antonette's mm -hmm. tale they were tagging her and saying thank you mm -hmm. we're so happy to hear you and mm -hmm. i i didn't really expect it yeah um and as they should, because it was her, like, again, it was just a vo random voice me memo, and yeah. she put it together and packaged mm. it in a way where people could reach, it, it could reach people and they could relate to it. Yeah, that's something we don't, we, I mean, we see it here and there, like a really fully conceptualized album, mm -hmm. like, as far as lately. Back in the day, that was standard, but mm -hmm. now it's like hotels, lemonade, mm. um, yeah. people don't really make concept albums mm -hmm. any, as much anymore. It's all about... I feel like collabs to then bring more, I guess we see it on social too. And it doesn't yeah. live as long. Yeah. I I can't remember the last album that I picked up and stayed with mm -hmm. and just kept mm -hmm. on repeat, repeat. Like I couldn't let it go. Very uh, true. Maybe Cleo Soul. Oh, um, I love her. Yeah, That's but true. like, 
Nothing. I mean, Jasmine's yeah. album. I played all old Jasmine stuff still. Like, mm. I'm, really? Yeah. yeah. I, yes. I love hearing that from from men. Nah, uh, yeah. um, reality nah. show. I love that album. Oh yeah. 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 I grew up in an R and B household, so like, it's all soulful. So Jasmine was like nah, early. For sure. Yeah. I'm begging. I'm. I keep putting pressure on her to do a live. A live album. Yeah, my goodness. Because if you hear her live, you're like, mm. she like doesn't the... sing anything the same way twice. Mm. Yeah. And her live performances are just stupid. They're just stupid. Yeah, she, mm. needs, she needs a live album. And she's like, all, all the greats have live albums. She like, is, you know I mean? she, she's another one that, that doesn't time. recognize. I don't think. She, I think she's starting to get it. Um, that's why she stays seated when she won the Grammy. She was like, <laughs> she called her. She was like, I know what I hear, but I did not hear my name. Like, I just sat there. Her her manager and Sweetie was like, um, you got to, like, gotta they know. called you. And she was like, oh. Like, it. <laughs> so she's still one of these people that's just walking around talking about she want to go to Home Goods. We're like, maybe not. Maybe somebody goes for Good, First of all, yeah. Home Goods. She girl, loves Home good. Goods. Shout out to Home Goods. But she, <laughs> like, that, like, that's the vibe that she's like, she doesn't get it. And I think that now she's starting to realize, oh, I can demand more. I can ask for more. Like, the first time in her life she stopped mm. the show and asked for them to fix her sound. Wow. Mm. She has gone through shows yeah. where the sound has been terrible. She can't hear herself. She can't this. She never felt confident enough to stop and say, this is what I need. And do it in a, like, a loving way. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. It, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't bitchy at all. She, yeah. It was masterful how she did it, but there's something in you where you don't feel like you can do that. Like, bitch, mm. you just want a Grammy. Yeah, like, stop mm. and, and, and get also, your sound together. These people are here to see you. Exactly. Like, and so they deserve mm. to oh, be yeah, able to hear you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You yeah. know, she, um, gosh, that's kind of crazy. Like, Best. that's how she don't get it. Like, the Philly folks been waiting for her since she was 12. You know what Listen, I mean? Since, like, since that voice. Home. Since mm. the whiz. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that voice. And then when she did her song with Missy, then everybody was like, yeah. So mm. it's like, Girl, they've been waiting. Don't let yeah. these execs tell you because they'll they'll cause like anything. They try to give you. They try to get the most for the least. Yeah. it's like, girl, yeah. you Jasmine Sullivan. Yeah, like yeah, I hope she knows that. I, think. I mean, look. I'm gonna ask her. She gonna be like, girl, shut up. Girl, you know you Jasmine Sullivan, right? Girl, she gonna be like, <laughs> she gonna be like get off my phone. <laughs> and it's funny because I don't. I'm like, did she ever meet Prince? Because I feel like people who like got mm. to meet him throughout his life, he oh. was always telling young artists, like, yeah, he no, was. like, do you know who you are? And mm. like, you're somebody special. And like, stop. Don't I let mean, them she play walked with you. into rooms and like with Stevie Wonder, and he was like, I love you, and she mm. just it, she can't. Beyonce, Beyonce stopped her show and was like. You're yes. one of the greats. Beyonce pulled her backstage during the on the run tour. Shout out! I love Beyonce for this. I'll never not love her. And was like, oh, she's going to be there. Get her back here. Mm. Yes. And told her, get back to work. Mm. We need you. I don't know what Listen. you're doing. I don't know what happened. I understand that this <laughs> business is terrible, but we need your voice. Get back to work. Mm. I love you. I have unreleased stuff of you. And Child. Jazz said she just stood there and was like, I just. Kept, I kept getting lost in her eyes. I was kind of her friends. <laughs> like she, she just plays all day. And she was like, and then Blue came over and was like, "Mommy, stop talking to the peasant and talk to me." But <laughs> that's not how she was. <laughs> but, sure. but she was just like, she made it a joke. Yeah. But you could see something yeah. had changed in her after that, where she was like, "Okay, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start writing. I'm gonna get mm. back." And Dang. like now, look, like I'm just, yeah. it's a, it's unbelievable what can happen when you believe in yourself and you mm. believe you belong in the room. Oh yeah, like that's wild. I'm like, I'm like, like you're Jasmine Sullivan. You're one of the great voices of this generation. Like, and one of the greats that, like, you know, there's certain people that it's only a few every so many generations. Yeah. Like, girl. Yeah. Now I'm all like, tell her to call Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, call, pep talk. Cause, cause clearly Beyonce will take her call and be like, Beyonce, I need help. Girl, Beyonce contract. sent her one of them boxes. She lost her mind. She was like, nobody uh, talked to me. That's for on my. A week. That's on my life goal list. I want to get an ID part. I want a box. Just be like, who? It is. Beyonce. I ain't gonna lie. I would just like her to know who I am. If she just be like, "Oh yeah, that's Amira," I'd be like, "Oh my god, <laughs> you'd be surprised." I'd be pregnant. That, that was my claim. If I thought, "Wow, Beyonce likes Jasmine," and she heard my voice. Uh -huh. no, she for sure, Beyonce yeah. heard yeah. my voice. Yeah. That's all I need. For sure. Listen, I remember <laughs> yours too. Early yeah. in, I remember. You know, Jill Scott was always going to be Jill Scott. Yeah. Like you know, you're, no one can stop your go. You are going to be who you are. But I remember that moment when Jay Z did an article. Um, I think it was either he just retired or something with the double XL. Mm -hmm. He did an article, like an interview with double XL. And I remember reading it. And I remember the way the industry, certain people give you a cosign and the way the industry embraces you. Mm -hmm. And I remember it, this was a specific interview and they did the interview in his Maybach. 
<laughs> and they were asking him about things. And they said, who are you listening to right now? And it was two people he named. He said, oh, right now, he said, and this was Jill Scott's first album, and it had just released. Oh, and he wow. was like, oh, my God, my favorite right now is Jill Scott. Who is Jill Scott? He said, honestly, it's on repeat in my yeah. in my in my Maba, right and i remember i remember that moment i said oh it's, this is different it's about yeah. to be different right and then when he, i read it and then at, at, at the time he was talking about andre 3000 because yeah. he was like outcast new album he said and i can't that was say speaker box in the love below yep. yeah and he okay. said i can't say that big boy's disc isn't good he said but i put in andre's and i haven't ever below. got to the second disc Oh, yeah. And then Perfect. it's almost like boom. But I remember that that year it was either Soul Train Award or one of the awards, and Jill Scott won. And there it has to be footage still out there. Jay Z's the first person that stood up in the audience. He was standing <laughs> on the aisle, and it was like Jill Back when Scott. He went to he award was shows. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was like Jill Scott, song, and he jumped up, Jay. and because she had to walk past him, and he's standing up, <laughs> and he's looking over his shoulder like, like yes, Queen. <laughs> but that's so important. Yeah. Like that's why it's important. Like. I'm doing this thing where I'm going online. I'm trying to find different people to collaborate with, different yeah. people to just, we have to be each other's community. Absolutely. We have to hold each other up and co-sign each other. Absolutely. It's so important. Not that we're Jill Scott or, or Jay-Z, but in our little world, like that's that's a huge part. We got to get on those calls and say, "What did they offer you?" Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. What did they yes. What did they offer? Me? Okay, yeah. no, we both gonna go back and yeah. say, "This is what it is." Listen, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. Like, and and like where we could help each other find momentum of yeah. like, look, yeah. they 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 saying this and they're looking for this, and yeah. I know who's looking for you, it's even important. if they're not looking mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. Like, yeah. When you mean? walk into the room, mention these names, mm -hmm. co-sign these people. Mm -hmm. Hey, th th have you heard mm -hmm. of this? Have you heard of? this podcast have you heard of that podcast you know this person she does mm -hmm. this did it. all of that is so important it's so important yeah. this is extremely important and we talk about we talk about it a lot more frequently now because amira has always been like she's always been like you have to you have to partner with them at some point you have to talk to them at some point so when you reached out it was natural you know what i mean like we, okay, we it was kind of like we spoke it into existence at one point so you know we've always been big fan of y'all's and just doing the research. Yeah, and I the saw the clips and I was I was looking at the different podcasts from the roots and yeah. I was like, oh shit. I was like, I like this con I'll bet. Yeah. <laughs> you hitting that <Child>. too. <laughs> <laughs> See? But um I was just like, Oh, I like I like this content. And I sent her, I was like, Oh, is it cool? Like I wanna reach out. She's like, I know how. Like, okay. yeah. <laughs> right. That's perfect then. So yeah. I'm really I'm really happy to to be here. Like it's a privilege because I know that y'all don't just talk to anybody. Yeah, and, right. you know, and we just we're like it's funny because I always be like sometimes like we're just we just talk to creatives and people don't often you know pods are it's a it's just a big creative endeavor yeah you know yeah. what I mean and you guys are like we're we always say we're the most inconsistent pod we record <laughs> here and there but and, consistent you know, with the quality oh absolutely yeah, because we only care about what's your creative journey how do you do what you do what made you want to do what you do mm -hmm. and sometimes we think about it like because people have to see something to be it right and so mm -hmm. we've had people in all types of journeys from like technical fashion designers where it's not even just the fashion but the tech technical stuff for like sportswear to mm -hmm. you know recording artists we have all different types of people but it's like how what makes you want to do it how did how did you do it how do you stay encouraged how do you stay yeah. inspired mm -hmm. and you guys have been going strong for a long time every single week yep. you know what i mean Child. and it's a it's a, like that in and of itself is even though we hate the grind it's a grind you know what i mean and staying consistent to your voice. Mm. It's like we said, it's like music. Like people sometimes jump on another wave and then they lose their core audience because mm -hmm. then they were like, well, who are you? We don't. Even, we didn't even see this. It's not even an era thing of yeah. like, now you've morphed to this. People just, they're in some other thing. But um, yeah, we like to talk to people that we're interested in and who we are like, dang, like they really doing their thing. So that's and that's the thing. That's why I'm last. I said I'm surprised <laughs> that the sponsors ain't like mowing y'all down because your they audience and your community. Yeah, are they there. they hit us up and offer us free free um <laughs> free products <laughs> or placement. And I'm like the fuck no, yeah. <laughs> I don't need a mop that bad or whatever it is. Not a mop. <laughs> Not a mop. It's like yeah. a, some nail that's stuff. That's a crazy I'm product. Like, <laughs> I don't know why I came with a mop, but I'm just like. These things, I'm like, I, that's not gonna pay my rent. That's not yeah. gonna, and that's not even what we're worth. Don't try me. You'd be like, I tried to uh, take your hair product to, the but a lot of company and they yeah. wouldn't take it as payment. For, 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 oh I'm like, oh, sorry. I tried no, to a lot of it, but I'm, I'm realizing that. that even with my, even with the like, my friends who are in this space and like full time, no, no other job. Like yeah. this is their job. Yeah, they're still cold calling. 
Mm. They're, they're still sending, they're hitting people up actively like, this is a mutually benefit, like, yeah. hey, we would love the opportunity to collab. And these people are like, oh, okay, cool. That mm. sounds great. We'll get you in touch with blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, so you got to go after it regardless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how big you are, whatever it is, you have to go after it. Do y'all mind me speaking something on y'all real quick? Mm -hmm. Please. I forgot to ask permission first. So I'm, I'm excited for the spaces that you guys create, if that makes sense. So like one of the things, like, like Amir has been saying, like you guys do a fantastic job, one, creating a community, you know, having the relationship between yourselves and then sharing that with people. But I would love to see like a space, like if somebody would be like, yo, here's a studio, I want mm -hmm. you to recruit here all the time, or here's a, a, an experience, you know, around the way curls the experience. I want, I'd, I'd be really excited to see what that looks like. Because even we had talked about a little bit more about um, Roots and how we said, you know, if DJ, you know, backdrop X, Y, Z, you know, I would have loved to see like what you guys would have brought to that stage energy mm -hmm. of, of your own environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with that we, opportunity ever now. <laughs> and, and jokingly, like what a space would look like. It would be like the club one top, the wellness center on the bottom, chicken wings mm -hmm. in the cafe, like all these kind of but things. I mean, like, like, yeah. That would be neat. I mean, I feel like in, in the space that you guys are in, that would be neat. Some place that people can call home because yeah, I feel like, like you guys create that space for yeah mm, that's, i love that i, see I love it and i could see y'all having that. something like that at essence fest or somewhere you see what I'm saying? Yeah. speak it it's a mecca where people come and then your community already is there yeah and you know what i mean because i mean like sable collective like um people who talk don't about know. It. what's the sable collective <laughs> yes shanti had a retail I guess it started as retail space and then it became online space um more because of covid and all the complications of that um and so now you're like on you're online, but you do have lots like of physical. at this moment it's just pop ups. Okay, right now yeah. while I'm trying to figure out if another brick and mortar is is what the the calling is. But it's like, to online speak to space that, too, like, though, right? Yeah, well, or if it's it an online boutique as well. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, every, but it it's still online. If it makes sense to even go to brick and mortar with the way things yeah, are now. Yeah, I just think that the experience is really important. Mm. To add to what you were saying, Josh, like it's really important for people to have this in-person energy share between yeah. people. Yeah. Um, and I do miss that. So it, I think it's really dope and a good disruption to because I also see the template of podcasting now is like. You have your setup. It's a cute setup. You got your blue, purple lights, cute thing. Yeah. <laughs> you do your clip. Mm -hmm. There's the lines there. And then we're sharing that. And it's like, what else? What yeah. fresh? What can, that's going to get old next really step? fast. Mm -hmm. What is the next thing that I'm more interested in, like, figuring out or f feeling out? But, um, yeah, I, that I think I... Ashe, to what I you would, said. I like that idea. <laughs> Even if it's like a live show kind of, yeah. look at me, I'm yes. fucking. Even if it's a live, I'm, I don't know, we have to be talking about this right now, but even if it's a live <laughs> show thing, but remember the healing thing that we did with old girl, where you, like if we walked into the space and. The healing thing? Child, we did that thing in Harlem or something where we did like <laughs> yoga and shit. It oh, was yeah, like a yeah, collab. Yeah, 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 yeah. But even if it was like, that kind of thing where you walk in and maybe you, you figure out what is your duality, what is the duality of you? What are the both, so what are the yings and the yangs of you? Like if we did something collaborative as community and then at the, in the end we're drinking and having a live show and talking mm -hmm. shit and maybe mm -hmm. people are sharing their duality or we're riffing off of that. Like it has to be something more than just like live show, come out, we're gonna talk our shit, mm -hmm. take pictures afterwards, buy our merch. I'm not interested in that as much. Yeah. So we have to figure it out, but that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we get into our, um, our usual question yeah right? yeah um morning routine what's both huh. of you like we, we usually <laughs> have like the quick the i'm quick about to disappoint y'all <laughs> what's the morning routine i have a child yeah thank god <laughs> so she really keeps me on my p's and q's we were homeschooling for two years but now she's gonna go back to school so it's been waking up yeah. um Oops. and catering to her and doing her thing first and then I'll like go to the studio and work. Um, but no, I, I'm, I'm not a regimented person. She has been in camp and so it's opened up a new world. There's something that I do want to return to where you had that six o'clock wake up call. You got to get the kid out the house and once you're out the house, you know, post up at a cafe, do some two hours of work, yeah. whatever. But um. Yeah, I don't, similarly, it any any given day it's a different thing. <laughs> yeah. Who knows, you know? It, it definitely ain't yoga and lemon water. No. <laughs> yeah. 
I I am a night owl. Mm-hmm. I will say that I am I'm up very late. You can she can I will text her at two something like, hey, I was thinking this. And thank God that she I know she keeps doesn't keep her phone in her room, so I'm not waking her up. But I my morning routine is terrible. I don't have one. I wake mm. up, I hit snooze a million times, Love and it. then I open my laptop half dead and I start my work in my bed, which is so bad. It's mm. so bad. But I have a night routine. Yeah. I do have that, and I have a routine throughout the day. I do have my checklist that I run through. By the time I get out of bed, I have the same tea every day. You know, I have a weekly thing where I'm like, okay, you have to work out at least four times a week. Like, I'm starting to do that thing, but I have not figured out how to get myself in the bed. Mm-hmm. I'll take a piece of gummy and everything. It'll be wired. Like, I'm just so, I feel so creative mm-hmm. that I'm doing the clips. I'm doing this. I'm thinking about this, looking at the stats. And it's bad. And I know it is, but it's just, it's worked so far. I mean, if you're not a morning person, you just aren't. I know what? It's like, y'all still doing the work and it's still working, Mm -hmm. right? I want to be that person, though. I do want to be the person that. You see no type, though. Like, Mm -hmm. if you're not, because I just, I'm not a morning person. Looks at my plants and Mm -mm. stretches. Mm -mm. Every creative is different. I feel like uh, when people, I feel like a lot of people are have to be like, oh, I have to be a morning person. I got to wake up early. I got to do this. Nah, like, I'm night. everyone operates different. Yeah. So, like, that's that's important. I think even within that, like, how do you, like, because I know we talked a little bit before, like, how do you keep and maintain balance? And I, at this point, like, we've kind of gone through a few different things. But, like, what would you say keeps Antoinette, Antoinette, and Shanti, Shanti? Like, what what's that thing that keeps you, you, in everything that you do? I guess would it be creative or, like, your work day? Or, yeah. Yeah. You go first. Girls, about this. <laughs> Um, hmm, I think check-ins are really important for me mm. and check-ins with myself. And that looks different every other week, depending on how I'm feeling. <laughs> so it could be like, oh, are you checking in? Are you taking care of your body? Are you eating well? Recently, it's been how are you spending your time? Mm. I've been really doing an audit on how much, how, what I do with my time, because that's really the most valuable currency. And I'm learning that as you get older. Um. But I think this is going to sound so me, but lists, <laughs> lists. I mean, even if it's lists of like, I just have these random lists lit- written everywhere where they might be dreams of mine. That might be what I need to do on the on writing, the weekend. It's writing it down. It's yes. writing it down. Da- something about putting yeah. it to paper. Mm-hmm. Mm. Definitely. Solidifies it in a way for me where it feels more tangible and and anytime I write, I'm a I'm a project manager by heart. So anytime I write something down, mm-hmm. it's a it's a map of how to get it done. It's in a certain order of like these are the steps, you mm-hmm. know, and and so that's been really important. And also just like my baths, like just mm-hmm. sitting and being still. I'm really trying to get get myself to be more in the present and finding different ways to do that. Whether it's riding my bike with no music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just why could just be silent? Can you be silent and in this moment? And like I talked to her about it on the podcast, but finding ways where I can be in touch with all my senses and not just sight, mm. but like sight, like ev- how how does the wind feel on my face? What is the, what are the smells that I'm smelling? Like how to just really be present and ground myself in that because I'm always so much in the future, mm. always. And you can miss all the greatness. Of oh, I miss, yeah. I've been missing yeah. so much. Mm-hmm. So those things. That's similar. Similar. I think I need meandering. I need open space. Mm-hmm. I need time where I don't have anything to do because that's when I can connect with my mm-hmm. yeah. self the best. I think I'm also learning to be more honest in with myself and in my relationships because I think when you... I think it's so easy for you to get caught up in trajectory, in um, living out what society thinks you need to be doing in your roles, whether that's in motherhood, whether that's in partnership, romantic and business wise. There's like this template that we're all tempted to follow that doesn't necessarily align with how what you really want. And so I'm trying to learn to be honest about what I want. Yeah. And and tap into that and, and don't want and don't want and like be honest about it rather than, you know, getting yourself caught up or hating what you're doing mm-hmm. or lying mm-hmm. or like having resentment, mm-hmm. be having contempt. So 
Yeah, I think the more that I'm in practice of that, the more I feel like I have permission to be my authentic self and I can figure out what my authentic self is and not feel guilty or like an imposter or like, you know, yeah. a liar inauthentic. Mm -hmm. So that shit is hard. It is dumb. <laughs> It is not fun. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. It's a ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. Um, so then we always ask this question. We ask people um, if you could define, or like if, if there was an album or even a song oh, that kind of like defines or is like where you, like describes where you are in your life right now. You always ask this? Yeah. I listen to every podcast. Yeah, I didn't hear that. Oh, I, yes, I did. I yes, heard on you, Brandon's. You did ask me. I did yeah. hear it. I heard it, but I'm like, oh, they asked this on everyone. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, I'm stressed. Oh, you should have been prepared. Or album that like, you know, you feel like it is, it's, it's, or even if it's your yep. theme for like where you are in your life mm -hmm, right now. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy that's crazy <laughs> yo um hmm we're the worst edit this out edit this long <laughs> real most people do kind of yeah. stole and there's some people who saw it and they be like bang some people they they came prepared and they be like is this I need to see let, let me go to my uh, let me go let to my go Spotify let me go through my favorites uh, real fast let me see cause it I might reveal know. itself I would have to think about that. I mean, need a minute. Even I guess a song. maybe. Um, mm. Someone that's been speaking to you. Yeah, or yeah, or a song that has really been speaking to you for you. I th I can't listen to this and haven't been listening to this album back to back. But I think Kendrick's new album really resonated with me in his trying to balance work and personal relationships and figure out what his who he is mm -hmm. in, in all of this. Mm -hmm. And I love him so much. So I think a lot of what he said hit and stuck with me that that I'm still unpacking. He kind of like opened up a key. Or again, in his authenticity, I saw something in myself that I think I've always been ashamed to like share yeah. my own like confusion or my own, you know, um, again, resistance to things. So... I would say his new album makes there's I don't know the all the songs or there's not one song particularly but yeah I, I fuck Mr. with Morale that one. Big Step yeah, up. Mm -hmm. I fuck with that one. I don't know y'all. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> y'all should have gave us some time. Y'all should have yeah. told us <laughs> that. Next time, anxiety. tell you them ahead of time. Um, but most people have something. Nah, what are y'all? I want to hear what y'all are. Oh, good job. Give me time. <laughs> <laughs> Queen. Flip it. Oh. Yes. Gosh, that, and it's funny because I'm we always asking it, but I'm like, well, what Nigga, would what? be mine? That's um, such a great question. I really, Badu's uh, music always, mm. Mm. I always love her stuff because her and Kendrick to me have a similar vein mm. where they don't, and it, it reminds me of y'all show. They never profess to have the answers. Mm -hmm. mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're asking the questions. Always, like, how you feel about this? Everything yeah. about do stuff always asks Forces the question. Forces you to reflect. Whether yeah. it's like you know, didn't you know? I'm trying to decide, mm -hmm. or even when I literally seat. had Mama's gun up. Really, I did ask that's it, a, but go ahead. Because didn't um, and then like I really like window seat a lot because mm -hmm. she really is just like. I need a moment. I want to get on a plane, have my window seat, and I want to get away from everything, mm -hmm. but I still need you to need me. Mm -hmm. I need you to want me. Mm -hmm. It's like that you want that closeness and you want a witness to mm -hmm. your life, right? Mm -hmm. And But then you also are like, but I do need a break, mm -hmm. but still hold space for me, right? Mm -hmm. um, and because I always feel this need to like, I don't really, I used to do a lot to like, be seen and be in front in this career. I thought, I but then it's like you kind of, I kind of be wanting to hide sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't be feeling like being in front of anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you know, so I have my song. You guys, are I've actually been singing it lately, mm -hmm. but it's "I Like the Sunrise" by Duke Ellington. Oh, and the the lyrics because I love it. I, I like the sunrise because it brings a new day. I like a new day. It brings new hope. They say I like the sunrise blazing in the new start. Nighttime is weary oh and so am i but like it goes on and on about all the possibilities mm -hmm. of what the sunrise is it's like this this new day is here again time She's what are you light. gonna do she with this just a light mm. why She's no but i love this <laughs> what's crazy is i'm i'm working on this new thing like this radical acceptance thing with a homie of mine and he's been really encouraging me 
he's like I used to sing. So he's like sing like you don't. It doesn't have to be per. Just fucking yeah. sing. Mm. And so this is the first song that I picked. Mm. Mm. And so I've been singing it. And it's so, I encourage everybody to listen to listen to Ella Fitzgerald sing it and then listen to Frank Sinatra sing it. You just be like, what? Wait, which mm. version is that? Huh? Which version? Who's the one that? It's by Duke Ellington, okay, Duke but it's a okay, okay, it's okay, a okay. jazz standard, okay, okay. so everybody sings it, okay. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But those two people in particular, but Ella's version is Ella, but and she's not doing too much on it. But it just it makes you feel hopeful, but you also hear the ache mm. in like the sunrise is here. There's a longing for something, mm-hmm. you know it's possible. And you might not even know what it is, but you just hope that the sun is in your favor. You hope that when the moon comes out, the moon knows who you are. Mm. You know, like you have a mm. sense of belonging in yeah. this world. And, and so I I love that song. And, and you sing, and but you're like, but girl, like, it's one of those things, me and my son, because my son does music and we talk about music a lot. And some of the best songs, they're, like they're sometimes they're not singers. Mm-mm. Like mm-hmm. to me, most Def's Umi says is a perfect oh, song. Oh my, I lo- that was my ringtone for so long. Yeah. Back <laughs> in the day when ringtones were things. <laughs> yes. Baby. It's a perfect song. It's a and perfect song. And he's not a singer. And you I don't want to hear it sung by a singer. At all. I want to hear it like that because you feel it. Yes, it, it, it was literally a profession of love. And yes. him just saying like, you know, I get discouraged. That was a prayer. And, it, it really is like yeah. it's a perfect song and i remember when it came out everybody loved it my grandma my mom my brothers me then yeah. my then my son his like his because it's, it's really about i'm not perfect but mm-hmm. i'm trying mm-hmm. and i'm trying to make it through life and show up yeah. and show, show up and i but i also and then i guess mm-hmm. it was like a global calling for black people i felt like and it's even him shooting it in cuba i thought it was like so intentional yeah. of like i want my people to be free mm-hmm. and but I know I'm not perfect, and I feel like Kendrick's music does that a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even the one where oh, he was he like, wants "To be free, yeah, he's he like, I, I'm gonna hit out. the streets." Yeah, he like, and I'm a protest against all the you know police brutality. But then when I look at gang warfare and my neighborhood and the way we handle beef, he's like, "I'm a hypocrite." Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like dealing with, like you said, the duality. He's working. Yeah. He's working through something and letting us in as he yes. does it. Yeah. Did you see the video? I was just telling her about it. Did you see the video of the? Um, there was a security guard at his last concert. At the Kendrick he concert? Crying. crying. And he was yeah. crying yeah. while yeah, while Kendrick was performing. I was trying. like, that's that's how you know your work. Yeah. Yes. You're doing some real work. What's man. your I, said, I, I was over here thinking about mine, like, oh my God. I, I gave you time. I now. got two. I know I got two. <laughs> it's crazy because um the first the first is a song, the second is an album. The first is Father Time by Kendrick mm-hmm. on his uh Mr. Brown Big Stepper. Um mm. Father Time because I'm in a space right now where me and my dad are developing a stronger relationship oh, which is really great. cool it's came out of a little murky space you know but we're, we're getting there and it's making me think about me being a dad because i'm gonna be a father mm-hmm. come november Congratulations. So thank you thank you so I'm, i've been doing so much like thinking about what yeah. that space looks like so every time I, when i first heard the song it was crazy i was the first heard the song I was in a gym i started crying in the middle of the gym and i was mm-hmm. like i gotta go so i like <laughs> ran down to the the uh the the locker room and like you know was like wow this is like powerful so you know, texting my dad, got like kind of my thoughts and stuff together, and then um, every time I hear it now, I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. Like, yeah, you know, he went through his from process. Like, uh, like that, let's say, nuclear family. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. mom and mom, dad, dad still married, everything. Yeah. Like, and so that was one of them things. I like, dang, you you had to still be complicated. Yeah, so, and he, I mean, yeah. he's a wonderful family. Yeah. So it's like shout out my fam because they watch. <laughs> so big shout out them. And then um, the album would be Pharrell's first album in my mind mm, because well, I feel I like. Know that. Ooh, you you don't? Not really. It's a no. great uh, give Why it a listen, not? give it a spin. Okay. That was um at the point in time, uh, for had done all that production, you know, like I think it was like eighty percent or ninety percent of the songs on radio in two thousand four were his beats. Mm-hmm. But um at this point now it was also like his moment, like, yeah, I can do this too. So mm-hmm. I feel like in the creative space for me, like we just finished a feature film. The podcast is, you know, doing relatively well in my opinion. So mm-hmm. um and just like I feel like as a, a creative, as a person, I'm like, yeah, I can do this too. Now I'm really kind of stepping out on that. Stepping in. So. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And, and, and Josh is, he's a, as far as film, he's an amazing producer. Thank you. Thank and you. And sometimes me pushing him to step into it, <laughs> like, bro, extra money. Like, you got this. Do what you need Everybody to do. Everybody needs you when they like it. <laughs> bro, where you at? Yeah. Tell yeah. what it was. It's like, I spent. I'm going to send you like, the art little pitch email and be like, no, help us. It's no, right. I was right. going to say that offline. Like, send, right. send the pitch because, <laughs> no, because, like, I used to work for the film commission here and it's a nonprofit and it was really no money, but it had a big title and it mm-hmm. put me in a lot of amazing rooms and spaces. Got it. But then 
like you leaving with you know almost twenty thousand dollars in debt like how did i i'm supposed to be making some real money mm. and then coming that non-profit life different i was different. there too girl and then you look you be like mission and vision set. my ass like, bro, <laughs> and you steady pitching for them to get the money yes. and yes. bringing in revenue mm. and creative ways so it's like that's why i know how to package stuff amazing right, yeah. because it's like but then you'd be like, this is this is hurting me. Mm. I need a nonprofit to I like now. I gotta me. do a GoFundMe. Yeah. I What's that mean? Me. Or that yeah, I gotta choose. I, me. I gotta pick me. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta put me first. <laughs> like, so um uh, all right, our last question we always yeah. ask is um, what does it mean to be a disruptor to you? Do you want me? You got it? Um, for <laughs> me, I think it has to do with your authenticity, right? Because mm. everybody, with nothing's new under the sun. Like you said, for around the way curls for us, we show up as ourselves, mm -hmm. and you know, fuck shit up with just being ourselves and not mm. even knowing that we're the impact that we're making. Yeah. So, I think it's definitely connected to authenticity. Um, yeah, that's that's for me. I think it's authenticity. I also, for me specifically. It's about being as loving as possible in a world full of savages. Mm. Mm. Everybody want to be a savage. Everybody mm. is really hurt. It's a lot of really hurt people. Mm. Scared people. Yeah. Scared people. Angry people. And it's turning into this like, um, this I got to choose me shit and not care or consider anyone else. Mm. And I'm not, I, I think um, we have to tap back into our humanity. And so my willingness to be as loving as I possibly can and as a, as vulnerable as I can and to trust that and know that like you might get hurt a little bit along the way but like your heart will heal but you'll be able to sleep at night mm -hmm. and so that's that's my main mission with everything that I'm doing right now that's what I've determined is like, I just want people to get back to their humanity mm -hmm. and their connectedness to like each other so that's it that was a mic drop that, that was drop really it. a mic drop. It was broke early. <laughs> <laughs> that is John on the floor. Uh, tell everyone who, which I, if they're familiar with us, they're familiar with y'all. But for people who may not, how do they find you? Where should, what spaces, what's your Instagram? Where can they, you know, connect with you guys and stay up to date on Around the Way Curls? We are around the way curls on all the social media. Not platforms. really. Not on Twitter. On Instagram. <laughs> ATWC curls. ATW curls. There you go. On Twitter. <laughs> we were, we drop every, now we drop <laughs> seemingly every Monday and Thursday. Wow. Oh. Uh, we're splitting them. Because those, those podcasts would get long. And I was watching them trail off and not finish. I said, no, no, we took a lot of time to do this. So we're going to break this up into two so y'all can. But people are really enjoying those, the two day, like two times a week things. So I'm oh, like, nice. cool. Like, why not? So every Monday and Thursday on all streaming platforms, we have a Patreon, www.patreon backslash around the way curls. So you can see us in nice. all of our glory <laughs> and yeah mostly send a dm hit us up on ig and yeah stay connected i'm antoinette was here on ig shanti is not here but the sable <laughs> collective is on ig that you should follow. also follow as well her online boutique that is curated and for women of color right did i get that right almost almost yeah, i it, fucked it, it up no you should have did it <laughs> It is it is curated for women of color, and we intentionally source from they, black, brown, black, and black. women makers. There you go. Love it. There we go. <laughs> I mean, listen, now you see yeah. exactly why this collab needed to happen. Um, yeah, this is I really nice. Really thank, thank you guys you. for coming on thank because, so you know, like I said, I'm, I've been a fan for a long time, and I just, I love y'all. Like, I really do. Like, you are needed, and your In vulnerability is, is needed. You are... Like, even the young women and teenagers, like, listening to y'all will help them. We will bring young women who are more compassionate with themselves into the world mm -hmm. if people listen to you, you know? Um, so this is another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. Um, signing off. Yeah. anything to say, Josh? Yeah. Follow us <laughs> at Disruptors ITC on Instagram. And check us out for more episodes. We got a lot of exciting things coming up. So please make sure you check us out. Um, I'm missing anything else, Amir? Nah, I, don't, I think you got it. Yeah, All right, cool. It. We holla at y'all next time. Peace. Peace. Yay.